Hi, it's Thomas Steed here. Just going to do a video talking about um, kind of foot tracing and uh, making your own custom inserts out of leather. So I made these last night. As you can see, they're not totally perfect inserts for these shoes, but they are actually cut perfect for my foot. So what I did was I uh, just sort of did a mock um, tracing as if I was to uh, be doing a, a foot tracing for uh, a fit sheet. Um, I, I was doing it off of uh, Frank's Boots, you know, um, franksboots.com. They've got a, a fit sheet and detailed way to do their fit sheet on there. Um, if they do still have the paper ruler on there, I would definitely advise to opt for using your own fabric tape, a uh, flexible fabric tape, if you're doing a full fit sheet. But just for tracing your own foot like this, the biggest thing to remember is, for one, to don't do it yourself because you won't get a perfect result just because of the way that you lean it causes more pressure on your foot as you're trying to lean over and so you're naturally going to end up with just a wider imprint than if somebody else does your tracing for you while you stand there so uh, preferably you're going to have somebody else do it and you want to make sure that you're going straight up and down with your pencil, pen, whatever it is that you're using to, to do the tracing. So now this is one of my feet right here. This is my other foot right here. You'll notice if I lay these, oh yeah, it's my right foot that's larger. If I lay these over the top of each other, My feet are slightly different. My right foot's slightly larger than my left. <clears throat> and my left foot has a little bit more of a, uh, I guess maybe it's a bungin, you could say. It's a protrusion on that knuckle. In any event, it's not a big enough difference for me to actually need to go into custom sizing. But... Um, other people actually have a large enough difference inside of that that it does opt for needing or wanting to get a uh, custom um, last done and paying that extra money um, when you're having either Franks or Nicks or Whites or whoever it is that's doing your, your boots actually build them specifically custom to your feet and the best option for that is to actually physically get there to that store and do it or to see a fitting specialist such as um, up in my region it would be a um, guy up in Idaho Falls at Footwear Outfitters his name's Nick fantastic guy that's who I went to for uh, my custom Franks for the first time because I didn't want to go through this process myself. Now, I didn't go through this process myself yesterday to order another pair of boots. Um, I actually was just doing it kind of mock just to double check my own foot size and stuff and decided, you know, digging around in the house, I found some extra, you know, leather scraps that we had sitting downstairs and just thought, yeah, let's see if I've got a couple of pieces that'll uh, work for some insoles and so I uh, I did now the reason I opted to do this is because uh, inside of these you know the red wings these are the classic Chelsea the uh, Hawthorne Mill Skinner inside of the vamped toe box area they opted to use a fabric lining and that's less structured than the actual leather that they use in the Iron Rangers or any of their other um, boots for the, the internal structure. If you have a pair of those, you'll know what I'm talking about. You can see it inside of them. And inside of this, it's different. 
so these end up breaking in a lot faster and start to wear more like slippers so even when you get them good and tight and the last is not you know rounded out like you know mine have become from having fat feet um they uh they break in and they, they start to feel loose and as your foot starts to mold not mold but mold into the uh but bad. I don't really know if you can you can kind of see what I'm talking about there where my imprint starting to take that's going to give you a little bit more room that develops inside of the shoe boot whatever you want to call it um, and I just wanted to take up some of that space and then something else inside of that because my feet are a little bit wider than than that um, footbed it's not really an insole because it's not really removable um, as you can see on the base of here uh, the way that it's constructed in these there's a little bit of an overhang an edge all the way around um, and obviously I, if I really wanted to I could come back and trim some of this back and I'm considering it but I haven't decided to do that quite yet. It's not something that bothers me. And, you know, it, it really actually helps kind of take up that little bit of extra space that's developed in there. Um, so I, I actually kind of like it. And uh, having that extra bit right up in here really does, you know, help uh, just provide a little bit more of that arch support, I guess you could say. Um, I'm rambling a bit, so in any event, you'll also be able to see that I did do some trimming from the actual footbed, so, and that's just so that it would fit a little bit better inside of the shoe, so after I made my first initial trace out and cut based off of you know my my foot pattern and then um, up along the toe area you know using the uh, actual shape of that the shoe itself to make a bit of a, a trace up there in that area um, I trimmed out the areas that were in excess the areas that I, I felt that I didn't need in there so that this would actually sit flat inside of the, uh, the shoe and you can see just after one evening of wearing this is a very soft pliable leather that um, I opted to do this with just because I it's what I had and you know, that's actually more so what I was looking for than having a stiff piece of veg tan leather you could do it with vegetable tan leather, you can do it with chrome tan leather, you can do it with basically any kind of, you know, leather that you'd feel safe sitting in there and standing on and having it, you know, interacting with your feet. And so that's, that's up to you what you do. I'm not here to tell you that you need to do this or need to do that, you know, different strokes for different folks. But in any event, that's, uh, kind of what I wanted to uh, to talk about with that is is you know you you can also purchase insoles online you can use you know synthetic ones you can use ones that have arch support you can use orthotics you can use whatever it is that you want just make sure that you're getting whatever ones that you need correct to the, to the shoe, to your sizing, um, which isn't as easy with um, custom lasted shoes, so your orthotic stuff is not going to um, work as well in that, and anything that has, you know, arch support or anything like that, uh, let me go grab my other boots. Those are not going to work 
as well inside of something like this that's got the high arch already. These are already constructed to kind of take care of those orthotic issues so you don't need any extra structure or plastic or rigidity, anything like that when dealing with something that's already custom made and um, developed on a last to take care of those issues. But it's something that's more like this that's got much more of a uh, you know flat structure. There's not as much arch support. There's a little bit. I mean it's not not a lot. I mean and it's more so um, in the break-in of, of the leather itself as you're wearing these. You'll want to get a good month or so or whatever in so that your foot is imprinting before you do that with, uh, with uh, leather and actually make your own insoles inside of there. Um, you know, there's, there's other uh, boots that if you can remove your insole and you want to make, you know, a piece of leather to put in there so you're standing directly on leather. Um, benefits of doing that is, is it's more um, antimicrobial. So that means it doesn't allow the bacteria that will cause your feet to stink and rot to, um, to breed as easily as the foam um, the more synthetic insoles. So that's, uh, that's one advantage to using leather, um, as your footbed and stuff like that. And in any, any event, um, you can use those insoles to trace and get the perfect fit for that boot or shoe or whatever it is. If you've got one that's removable, I'm not advising you to go and tear something out that's been glued down inside of a boot or a shoe that would be destructive and don't don't do that um, but if you've got another insert or insole that you've used that you don't mind it being somewhat um, damaged or whatever if it's a little bit different than the shoe that you're going to be using and you can trim that up first before Tossing it, you know, like an old pair of, you know, odor eaters or something that you had in another pair of boots that you don't care about or something like that. Opt to do your practice on something that you don't care as much about. I mean, even a piece of paper. Tracing your foot out or whatever on a piece of paper or taking the base of your shoe and setting it down and starting with tracing the base of the shoe and then working back that little quarter inch of a welt all, all the way around whatever it is that you you feel like doing to work its way back to what you want fabric obviously is going to be a little more forgiving than paper because paper kind of crinkles and makes a little bit of a mess but you're just making your your basic rubric before you transfer it over to your final leather because you can always take away material but you can't add it back when it comes to that so as you're trimming you always want to take that into consideration that less is more so that you're not ending up um, eating away at material and product that you spend money on um, and causing you to have to start all over and then all of a sudden you're you're into another piece of edge tan leather that cost you I don't know, $30. I, I don't know. I don't know how much it cost you. Um, in any event, I'm starting to ramble. But just take that into consideration. Uh, that's what I just did for these, and these actually fit as snug as a bug in a rug now. Absolutely love them. So once again, um, probably should have dropped this at the beginning, but, you know, I'm terrible at it. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down in the comment section if there's any questions that I somehow missed um, answering amongst my rambling. Drop it in the comment section. I'm very active and I will respond to you. I'll respond to you ten times.
if I haven't clarified it. So don't feel guilty asking me anything. All right. Thank you for your time. You have a good one.